What is the deadliest object humans have ever created? Some people will say the Kalashnikov and its many variants. Other people will say it's nuclear weapons, given their terrible potential in the world's stockpiles. However, neither of them have even come close to the toll taken on human life by this single object. Maybe the biggest self-owned public health threat humanity has ever faced. Even bigger than Greenworm Jr.? Unfortunately, Arya, yes, even bigger than that. Now entering the facility. It's time for some risk recalibration. You see, humans don't perceive risks very accurately. In fact, I focused on this pretty heavily when I was in graduate school. You actually have degrees. I thought you were just winging it. Wing it, Aria? Who am I, the US Secretary of Health and Human Services? The classic example of a failure of risk perception is the fact that many people are more afraid to fly than to drive, even though driving is one of the most dangerous things that they do. Well, that is, unless they do this. The deadliest thing ever invented is the tobacco cigarette. Thankfully, we're living in a decade where everybody knows how cigarettes are bad for them, but I don't think most people know just how bad they are for everyone. Eight million people die every year from smoking-related illnesses. One million of these people aren't even smokers. They just inhale secondhand smoke. Eight million deaths a year is more preventable deaths than from illegal drug use, obesity, and alcohol. It's second only to high blood pressure. In the 20th century, it's been estimated that smoking led to 100 million premature deaths, which is more than twice the number of deaths in World War I and World War II combined. And that was before a truly global economy. Some estimates put smoking-related deaths over this century at 1 billion. More deaths in 100 years than in all recorded conventional wars since 1800. 27 times over. There's a reason why one of the first things your doctor asks you is whether or not you smoke. Up to 50% of smokers who don't quit will die from it. Recalibrate that risk in your head. Would you try anything with that kind of long-term risk? I'd rather skydive without a parachute. And people actually do that, by the way. Now, I know some of you are probably smokers or no smokers, so I don't want it to come off like I'm lecturing you here. It's your body, your choice, right? If you're a man. So if you already know all the health stuff, think about the environment. Cigarette butts are the single most littered object on the planet, with an estimated 4.5 trillion of them thrown onto the ground every single year. In China, 30% of all trash is cigarette butt. Think about that for a second. And unlike a waste product like, oh, I don't know, nuclear waste, which gets less dangerous over time, the 4,000 plus chemicals in cigarette butts stay on the ground and leach into it and stay toxic forever. It's not an overestimation to say that cigarettes and the trash they produce are literally one of the biggest threats to the environment and health that we've ever faced. Even bigger than this boiled kneecap of a face? Again, yes, unfortunately. <sighs> Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and sci lion, Kyle Hill. You know, we go to a lot of interesting places here at the facility. Chernobyl, Fukushima, space, eventually. And I can't do so without first sending a lot of private information online to coordinate things. <laughs> I can't do that without knowing that I'm secure, especially from Greg. Greg. I need to keep my private information online private. That's why I use the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is a premium virtual private network service with over 3,000 servers in 100 countries that encrypts all of your information sent between your devices and the internet. You can use Surfshark services to bypass censorship, mask your IP address, or change your device's virtual location. Prompt critical to my nuclear work is that Surfshark VPN helps me travel. It masks my IP so that I get better deals on flights that aren't based on my location or device 
keeps me safe on public Wi-Fi in the airport when I'm headed to another nuclear power plant, and it has a kill switch that will automatically disconnect me from the internet if my VPN connection ever drops. If you want a more secure surfing experience like me, go to surfshark.com forward slash Kyle and use the offer code Kyle for four extra months free. And hey, there's a free 30 day money back guarantee. So why don't you give it a try? Surfshark VPN, keep yourself safe from the Gregs. A quick aside while we travel to the facility projection room. You know, when I was walking through Chernobyl, our contamination specialist, who is a heavy smoker, turned to me and said, you know, Kyle, it's not actually the chemicals and carcinogens in tobacco that kills you. No, it's the radiation. You see, there is radiation in the tobacco plant. Naturally occurring radium in the soil and in fertilizer gets taken up by the plant. And then when you smoke it, radium and its daughter products fill your home and fill your lungs and that irradiates you. Now that is true. What's not true is every, the rest of what he said. I looked this up later on and no, the radiation dose that you can get from smoking cigarettes over time is not significantly contributive to the overall health effects of smoking. So um, just wanna get that out there in case you've heard that factoid before. And I needed something to distract me from what happens on subways. You don't wanna see what the Kevin next to me is doing. Where are your pants? Well, well, why do that in public? Oh, okay. Why do humans fail to properly assess the risk of cigarettes? They kill someone somewhere every three seconds, and yet... Oh, he's such a bad boy. Indeed, cigarettes' perceived coolness is part of the problem. Another part, however, is cognitive bias. More specifically, the optimism bias. Humans do a lot of risky things. They bungee jump, they motorcycle, they platform one of the biggest misinformation agents on the planet. But the funny thing is, humans believe that risks are only risky for other people. Like we said, driving is one of the most dangerous things that you do. But be honest, when I show you a scary statistic like this, not one of you thinks it's going to be you. That fate is only for bad drivers, right? Similarly, Smokers tend to believe that they are less likely to get a smoking-related illness than another smoker. Of course, if everyone thinks they are above average, half of them are wrong. The optimism bias is the bane of many public health officials. Not only does it make it less likely for people to consider the risk that you're talking about, it also makes those people less likely to take preventative action because they think they are less likely to experience those risks than the average person. And not all of these health challenges are the same. For example, cavities are one of the most prevalent chronic diseases in the world, and we've gotten people to take preventative action. But when something like a uh, pandemic comes along, we can't get everyone on the same page. Why? Risk can be thought of as a product of two variables, severity of risk and likelihood of risk. Wow, you do have a degree in this. Dentists overcame the optimism bias because patients know that the dentist can be very stressful and painful, and they know they have to go to the dentist relatively often. 232,000 Americans died unnecessarily from COVID-19, in part because all of the misinformation that claims the disease is both unserious and unlikely. Both false claims lowered the overall perception of the risk. Part of good public health communication is properly calibrating risk variables in people's minds. Look, again, I don't mean to lecture you here. I just think it's very important to highlight that we all have our blind spots. All of you probably know that cigarettes are bad for you, but you probably didn't know that they are literally the deadliest thing ever invented. It is in recognizing our blind spots and our failures of risk perception that I think we can grow as critical thinkers. How else would you know when someone has been a dangerous crackpot their entire life? Yeah, Aria, how else would you know that? Until next time. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a not tinged yellow lab coat, 
If you want videos early, if you want to join our private Discord, if you want private live streams every month with me, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria in every single episode. And the <laughs> boy, oh boy, there are so many of you. How could I ever thank all of you and pass that? There's another thing. It's not just smokers. It really is kind of just air particulate entering the lungs that is the problem. Something else that may hit close to home is the fact that like cigarettes, not nearly as close, but like cigarettes, indoor fireplaces kill a lot of people or at least contribute to uh, air pollution related illnesses each year. It is not good at all to sit around the campfire for you or to have a nice fire in the winter time in your fireplace. I know it's hard to hear, but that's why our risk perception can get so warped. We conflate the feeling of, you know, just taking a break at work or sitting around the campfire, singing the campfire song with a good time, and that's good for us, but it's not. And so I feel like I have to be the wet blanket on the campfire, which you probably shouldn't do either. Thanks for watching. Why am I doing an Ask a Ninja thing? Which is probably why you, sh I, you shouldn't sit around by a campfire. Those will get you. And they'll get you good. <laughs>